Peace be upon you, friends. As you know, we have started a YouTube series on the Speaking History channel called The End of Times 2024, where we are discussing significant events and predictions related to the end of times. In the previous episode of this series, we talked about what the Day of Judgment entails and how its signs are categorized. The first sign mentioned in the minor signs was the invasion of the Tatars, which wreaked havoc upon the Muslims. Today, we have the second episode of this series. So, let's begin today's episode. One of the rare signs among the minor signs is the fire of Hijaz, which refers to a great fire erupting from the land of Hijaz. There is no dispute about it, as it is mentioned in Bukhari and Muslim. According to Bukhari's narration from Hazrat Abu Huraira, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, the hour will not be established until a fire will come out of the land of Hijaz, and it will illuminate the necks of the camels in Basra. Bukhari and Muslim In this hadith, Basra is mentioned. It is not Basra of Iraq but a famous city between Medina and Damascus in Sham, which is approximately 48 miles away from Damascus. It is the same place where Ba'ira, the monk, had predicted the prophethood of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, upon seeing him. Some scholars also state that this is the fire that spread for miles after the 12th of Jamada al Thani in the year 654 Hijri. This fire continued to burn until the 27th of Rajab, which is about 52 days, and according to Imam Nawaywa's explanation of Sahih Muslim, it started from the eastern direction of Mount Hara in Medina and its light reached Mecca, even as far as Basra, as mentioned in the prophecy. Abu Usama narrates that in Damascus, the light of the sun doubled on the walls. We were astonished as to what caused it until we heard news of this fire. Another eminent scholar, Qut al-Din al-Tajali, who was present in Mecca when the fire broke out, writes about this fire in his writings. When the fire reached a certain stone that was within the boundaries of the sanctuary of Medina, it extinguished and became cool. Another notable figure of that time was Qazi al Qazi Sadrat in Buzmai, who was in Basra at the time of the fire. He informed the famous historian and commentator Ibn Kuthir that he heard people in Basra saying that they saw the necks of camels illuminated in the light of that fire. This indicates the event mentioned in the hadith that the fire from Hijaz would illuminate the necks of camels in Basra. Then, in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, there is a mention of a call to two major groups for a war. The majority of the scholars, including the commentator of hadith, Hafiz Ibn Hajar, agree that this refers to the Battle of Sifin, which took place between the Muslims Imam Ali and the rebellion of Muawiyah, near the location of Sifin, which is close to the Euphrates River. This event occurred in the year 37 Hijri or 657 CE. Imam Ali had marched with his army from Kufa to this place, where the forces of Sham, Syria, were already stationed, and they were entrenched in trenches dug in this region, with their assembly positioned on the road leading to the Euphrates. Although Imam Ali assured them that they had not come to fight, and the advisor of Muawiyah, Amribn al az advised him to seek reconciliation, Muawiyah did not agree. He insisted that the killers of the Caliph Uthman be handed over to him. The formal commencement of this battle took place in the month of Safar. Many famous personalities and companions participated in this battle. Then in Sahih Muslim, there's a narration from Hazrat Umar ibn Khattab that Muhammad said. Slave girls will give birth to their masters, and you will see barefoot, naked, destitute shepherds competing in constructing tall buildings. Some scholars suggest that the first part of this hadith refers to the later Islamic conquests, during which many slave girls were captured and gave birth to children who became the masters of their owners. Whereas some argue that it symbolizes disobedience of offspring, meaning daughters would behave toward their mothers as slaves. Whichever interpretation, both aspects are present in reality. The second part of the hadith, that destitute shepherds will compete in constructing tall buildings, has also been manifested, if you look at the Arab countries today. In Musnad Sharif, there's a narration from Hazrat Usama ibn Zaid. 
the Prophet Muhammad ascended a high place in Medina and addressed the companions, saying, Do you perceive what I perceive? The companion asked, What do you perceive, O Messenger of Allah? He replied, I see the afflictions raining down on your houses like the rain. In this hadith, the Prophet mentioned afflictions raining down on your houses with the analogy of rain. Modern scholars interpret these afflictions as the unseen infiltration of evil through TV, satellite, and internet into homes, symbolizing the onslaught of Satan's influence, as implied by the afflictions mentioned. Friends, I hope you liked this episode. So, I request you to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon. Like and share the video. And express your valuable opinions in the comment section below the video. See you in the next episode. Goodbye.